So if that alone isn't enough reason to upgrade your Vim to the latest version, let me give you a couple more. Recently, a lot of you have asked uh, me to make a video about my uh, development setup, about my terminal environment with Vim in it, etc. And I want to do more videos on that in the future. But for now, I want to highlight that I just upgraded my Vim to the latest version 8.2 and it has some cool new features and I also updated all my plugins, which is mostly Vim, uh, Vim Go, which uses the, the Go Plea server, which has improved quite a bit. And I also want to talk about Go Vim as a possible alternative for uh, Vim Go in this video. So Vim 8.2 was uh, released a couple of days ago and mostly it has two major features uh, which are called pop-up windows, which allows sort of a, a window feature that is completely decoupled from, from the rest in uh, Vim and allows overlays and that kind of stuff. And also text objects. And these are kind of cool for everyday use. And these are also where this uh, Vim killer sheep game comes from, which is basically a demo of all of those features. You already just saw the, the game in the intro and I'll uh, show it again at the end of the video. Uh, but first I also updated my Vim Go plugin, uh, which means I'm now using the latest Go Please, which is uh, the official language server that Go uses. So Go Please um, is officially in, this is the right link here. It's officially in alpha status and considered not stable, but I've had great results with it so far, uh, and, and I would consider it better than the, the alternatives that we had before. It's not specific to Vim, it works with all kind of editors, but I think for Vim it has the most, it has the, the biggest impact. So mostly you notice it on auto completion. So here right now I have font, which I've already imported, and it's super fast. Also with the new the new window feature, I'm not sure if, if the new window feature is already in use here because of course um, this kind of menu is something that was present in, in Vim before as well. Uh, but it looks it looks very good. It's, it's very fast, so I'm very happy about this. It also works very well with uh, unimported packages. So I only have the, the font package uh, imported here right now. So let me say I want to do something like json.marshall. There we go. It says from encoding.json, which I don't have imported yet. So if I uh, run this right now and then save and go import it runs, there it is. And I think this is this is extremely cool because a lot of people are saying, no, I need IDE kind of specific features. Uh, I was I was one of them. <laughs> um, this basically gets you a lot closer to this. Whether you actually need this or not, that's of course up for debate and it's completely up to you. But for me, I do consider this a great convenience feature that I use every day. But my favorite feature with uh, Go Please that I discovered um, sometime today actually is uh, this one. So if you have a custom type, so let me say something, I have something like a category, like think of a, a, a blog website or something, we have a category and there we have posts and that is a slice of posts something like this then of course we also have post and a post has a post is also a struct and that has something like a title which is a string and maybe a published boolean something like that so if we have these custom types so let me say i'm starting with the category programming that's a category so of course now in autocomplete i have this category right here which is expected, but now what is very cool if I go for posts. So now if I do an autocomplete, it's context aware and proposes my slice of posts here, which I think is extremely cool. Um, if I do it again, because it's a slice of post, I get the post in here. And if I do it in here, I get the, the things that I have in here. So interestingly for published here, <laughs> it, it now suggests anything that would return a bool, which would be json.valid first, false and true, or just the, the second and third um, suggestion. But still, I think this is this is extremely cool here. I'm missing the, the comma. And here, of course, programming is defined but never used. That's why it's underlined right now. So I think this is extremely cool. I really, really love it so far. And uh, this is my, my favorite feature of the latest update of Vimgo which actually is a new feature in Go uh, Please. Let me quickly also talk about a possible alternative to Vim Go, 
there is a new plugin that's called GoVim, and I actually wasn't aware it existed, but it was used here as a demo for Vim uh, 8.2. So here you can see the window feature. If you hover on this line, it displays this additional window thingy here. And I wasn't aware that that this even existed. Um, and at first I just thought GoVim was maybe VimGo, but then I realized it is a separate plugin. And what kind of intrigues me about it is that it is written in Go not Vim script. So with Vim 8, it has that channel feature where you can easily run um, separate processes completely async. Yeah, this Go Vim is written in Go, which is kind of cool because this means I could potentially contribute to it because I don't know any Vim script, but I do know Go. So I haven't checked it out yet, but I kind of want to. Uh, on the other hand, I'm of course extremely happy with Vim Go, especially uh, with the new features that use the, the Go Please language server. But nevertheless, I will definitely give this a shot simply because it's written in Go, which is cool and which I definitely want to support. But I assume the reason you uh, came here is because you want to see me play Killer Sheep. So I have to zoom out a bit here because Killer Sheep needs at least 45 lines of the terminal. I'm not sure if I have them yet. I do. Okay, so let's play. doesn't work too well with the um, color scheme that I have here, so the text is kind of hard to read. But, uh, oh, that, that was a short game. Yeah, maybe I better stick to tutorial videos than Let's Plays. See you soon!